I think I know how to find Ezra. The first and second episodes of Ahsoka are dripping with Star Wars spoilers. Dave Filoni of Lucasfilm claims that the Ahsoka Disney Plus TV series is effectively season 5 of Star Wars Rebels. Fortunately, the first two episodes are astonishingly understandable for first-time viewers. As George Lucas' protege, Filoni has inherited the master's talent for bursting into a narrative midway and giving viewers all the hints they need to understand what is happening. That master and apprentice is effectively the subject of the Osoka Disney Plus TV series, Filoni's first excursion into live action, is thus quite fitting. While Morgan Elsbeth is basically an apprentice who has been cut off from her own teacher, Ahsoka Tano and Sabine Wren quickly fight with Balin Skull and Shin Hattie in the first two episodes. Here are all the Easter eggs and allusions to Star Wars that can be found in Ahsoka episodes 1 and 2 as the search for Grand Admiral Thrawn gets underway. The Star Wars opening crawl features Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka. The head of Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy, had vowed that the classic Star Wars opening crawl will return, but she had hinted that it may just be for the movies. But it's returning far sooner than everyone had anticipated, launching the Ahsoka Disney Plus TV series in grand fashion. The use of a strong red as the color is very noteworthy. Crimson is the color of evil in Star Wars, and crimson opening crawls have been connected to some of the most sinister sections of the Skywalker tale. The Imperial Remnants are mentioned in the opening credits of Ahsoka Episode 1. Ahsoka is set some years after the events of Return of the Jedi, when the Empire was thought to have been wiped out, much like the Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett. The Book of Boba Fett Episode 5 uses the phrase Imperial Remnants to allude to the Imperial groups and the Mandalorian affirmed that they are still active in the galaxy. The phrase Imperial Remnant is taken from the comic book series Legends, where it was used to describe a region of space inhabited by the last piece of Palpatine's empire. The Battle of Lothal epilogue of Star Wars Rebels included the disappearance of Grand Admiral Thrawn, widely acknowledged as the finest military strategist of the empire. Ezra Bridger, a Jedi Padawan, called in a herd of Pergil, the fictional hyperspace whales from the Star Wars universe who seized Thrawn's flagship and pulled it into space while carrying Ezra and Thrawn. The Empire is prepared to go to any lengths because they feel they have finally discovered a means to bring Thrawn back. Several iconic Star Wars Rebels characters make their live-action debuts in the Ahsoka Disney Plus TV series. Here are Cindela, played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and Sabine Wren, played by Natasha Liu Bordizzo, quickly join Rosario Dawson's Ahsoka Tano. One image also includes a quick glimpse of Imanis Fandi's Ezra Bridger thanks to a holo projection. Garazab Zebarelios, a Lassat warrior who appeared in The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 5, is the sole character who is absent. Sadly, Ahsoka is unlikely to appear because of his position in the Star Wars chronology, which is apparently contemporary with Season 3 of The Mandalorian. In order to give the action a feeling of scale, George Lucas always likes to start his Star Wars films with a spacecraft flying across the screen. In an interesting Star Wars Easter egg, Filoni plays off of this by portraying a New Republic prison transport in the traditional manner in the opening scene of the first Ahsoka episode. The upgraded MC-80A Heavy Star Cruiser Home 1, which served as the Rebel Alliance's flagship, is receiving a senior Imperial prisoner named Morgan Elspeth. Former Jedi Balin Skull and his Padawan Shin Hadi, two enigmatic characters who are set up as a genuine force to be reckoned with, are quickly introduced in Ahsoka Episode 1. Shin may be brutal, but Balin is the actual center of attention. He climbs a ramp similarly to Darth Vader, and Ahsoka faces off against him in a magnificent corridor sequence reminiscent of Rogue One, a Star Wars story, among other visual signals that position him as a threat on par with Vader. The kind of shuttle that Balin and Shin fly is comparable to a Lambda-class shuttle, which is commonly used by top officers in the Empire. The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 5 featured Morgan Elspeth, played by Diana Lee in Osanto, in a confrontation with Ahsoka Tano. She reappears in Ahsoka Episode 1 after being freed from solitary confinement by lightsabers for hire Shin Hattie and Balin Skull. Ahsoka capitalizes on the Arthurian heritage associated with the name by having Balin refer to her as Lady Morgan on a regular basis and having the episodes quickly reveal that she is a night sister of Dathomir, one of the witches who use dark side magic. Morgan is another name for Lady Morgana, the witch who acted as Merlin's main foe in the Arthurian legends. Dark parallels may be drawn between Lady Morgan's rescue and Leia's in the first Star Wars film, which was eventually renamed A New Hope. However, this is more than simply a Star Wars Easter egg, it refers to Morgan and the person she is looking for as the Empire's new hope. If Morgan's mission is successful, the galaxy as a whole will be in danger. Putting on her robes, Ahsoka explores a destroyed Jedi temple. The first Ahsoka episode takes place in a mystery temple that is subsequently identified as being on the planet Arcana, which the Sisters of the evil planet Dathomir founded as a colony thousands of years ago. 
The Night Sisters were first introduced by Dave Wolverton in his Legends book The Courtship of Princess Leia, but George Lucas himself added them to canon in Star Wars, The Clone Wars when he came across some art depicting them. Given that the Night Sisters are often thought of as witches with magical skills, their colony's name seems fitting. Temple from the Ahsoka trailer featuring the World Between Worlds logo. The ancient Zepho Temple from the Jedi, Fallen Order video games is reminiscent to the design of the Night Sister Temple on Arcana. Long before the Jedi were born, the Force-sensitive Zepho species traversed the galaxy and Jedi, Fallen Order established they visited Dathomir. It seems natural that they had a big impact on the Dathomir Night Sisters. Three broken sculptures that dominate the temple eventually turn out to be Sabine's key to opening the map Ahsoka finds. These presumably stand in for the three Mortys gods, enigmatic beings connected to the Force's primordial origins. In Star Wars, the Clone Wars, Anakin Skywalker met the gods of Mortys, and in Legends, they had a past relationship with the Night Sisters. The Rakata Infinite Empire in the Old Republic of Star Wars. Some fans have hypothesized that Grand Admiral Thrawn has joined forces with the Rakata, a species whose infinite empire ruled the galaxy in the Legends television series. The star map that Ahsoka found is undoubtedly comparable to the Rakata star map from the original Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic video games. It will be interesting to see whether this is more than just a Star Wars Easter egg or a hint. The droid Hying, who was last seen in Star Wars, The Clone Wars, is once again played by David Tennant. Hying, who was created some 25,000 years ago to aid Jedi younglings in the creation of their lightsabers, is reportedly far older than Yoda, according to the recently published Star Wars Timelines book. Hying can recognize Bail and Skull using the records of previous lightsabers thanks to his expertise and experience, which helps to explain why he is so focused on Jedi etiquette. Ahsoka is questioned by Hying about how she persuaded Morgan to reveal the location of the map. Her reaction reveals that she made use of the Mind Probe, a force ability that is often associated with the evil side owing to its intrusiveness. During the Clone Wars, the Jedi did permit the use of Mind Probes on captives, but such were seen as a sign that the inmates had turned against the light. Ahsoka continues to use the codename Fulcrum. Ahsoka chose this as her nickname when she joined the Rebel Spies since it was once the name of a covert communications frequency used by Anakin Skywalker himself during the Clone Wars. The fact that the term Fulcrum is linked to the idea of the balance of the Force is intriguing, indicating that Ahsoka regarded her job as carrying on Anakin's destiny as the Chosen One. In preparation for their meeting with General Hira Sindala, Ahsoka approaches Home One and declares her ship's identification number. It seems to be T61974, an apt number considering that Dave Philo the man behind Ahsoka, was born on that day in 1974. One of Ahsoka's funnier Easter eggs is this one. In Return of the Jedi, Home One served as the Rebel Alliance's flagship, the New Republic Defense Fleet probably employs her in a similar capacity. Admiral Akbar, the most esteemed strategist in the Resistance, generally served as its commander. Here, Akbar genuinely makes a cameo appearance and invites Hera to a meeting. Some well-known locales on Lothal, an agricultural planet that served as the setting for Star Wars Rebels, are recreated in Ahsoka Episode 1. Though it's crucial to note that they aren't exact live-action remakes, the photos purposefully pay homage to iconic moments from the animated television program. Since the collapse of the Empire, Lothal has thrived, and everything is newer, fresher, and better maintained. A number of significant Star Wars Rebels characters make their live-action debuts in Ahsoka, along with some shockingly small people on Lothal. In the early years of the Empire, Ryder Azadi served as the governor of Lothal and was imprisoned for sedition. He was a key figure in the liberation of Lothal from the Empire and is ostensibly still in that position under the New Republic. Jai Kel, a former Imperial cadet turned rebel who assisted Azadi, is reportedly now a senator for the New Republic. The restoration of a painting built by Sabine Wren in celebration of her comrades is one of the most lovely Star Wars Easter eggs in Ahsoka Episode 1. This is also the ideal method to pay tribute to Star Wars Rebels' visual aesthetic by incorporating it into the Disney Plus live-action TV series. Fans were allowed to snap pictures of themselves in front of the mural at Star Wars Celebration 2023, which has played a significant role in Ahsoka's marketing. Role in Ahsoka's